okay anyway so let's get me let's get get the definition for pivot table first now when you're working with pivot table guys often you're going to come across transactional data now what does a transactional data mean a transactional data means something that is collected at so, at source like for example let's look at the telecom industry right take any one carrier like for example airtel now every second somebody is making a call or a sms and that information is just one particular row happening right which means airtel's database is basically getting inserted with a lot of information every second now what they i mean that's just raw data but when it comes to basically looking at the information uh, that's a whole different story right i i have i am sure they have a lot of it infrastructure which what they do is they summarize that information and show it to each of the customer their information right so it's basically condensing that all transactional data into meaningful information such as bills or looking at the sales numbers if the company people are looking at it right so that's that's really the the idea behind pivot table what it does is basically it takes any transactional data and converts it into something meaningful right and it can be mean, meaningful would mean uh, a report or a dashboard right so that's what a uh, pivot table does it takes the data pivots the data in such a way that you are able to make meaning out of it okay so for this particular session we are going to cover um, okay functions you have already covered so i'm just going to hide this we're going to cover these four examples and we're going to take certain examples um uh, uh, certain other uh, things along with it also now uh, everybody has downloaded the downloaded the files so what i'm going to do um in this particular session is i want to do some things and you can parallelly do that along with me right so if uh, there are any doubts obviously i'll take a few doubts but then we'll quickly move on to the newer concepts okay so let's get started uh, so the first concept is manual grouping working with non numeric data so let me just look at the data in this particular data we have employees location and gender three columns right and none of the columns have any numerical data on on top of it right so that is what we're going to learn we're going to learn to work with non numeric data and then what information are we going to find out from this particular uh table right we're going to find out how many males or females are present in each location and then we are also going to get a region wise summary for looking at the employee count within each of the regions now unfortunately what happens here is that the region data is not present directly within the pivot, uh, within the data right so it is something that we will create in the pivot table right now you can just say hey can we just use vlookup and put that information here and then use it in the pivot table yes you can do that but for this example purposes what i'm going to teach is a concept called as manual grouping which we often encounter in uh, situations where there are ample of situations where you can um, use this particular thing right it's one of the basic things that we learn on pivot table to use right so i'm going to show you a manual grouping example also so let's get into it to insert a pivot table what you can do is go to the insert tab say pivot table right and say okay now what this does is is base it basically opens up two tabs related to pivot tables one is the analyze tab and design tab first we're going to learn about the design tab in this particular example and then we'll come on to some of the examples in the uh, analyze tab okay now once you encounter this what you will also notice is that you have pivot pivot table uh, you know this particular thing is where your report is going to get generated and you're also so going to get a list of fields or columns listed in that particular table right there are also filters columns rows and values area which you basically can drag each of the columns and then uh, uh, control how this uh, report will look like okay now 
this is a very similar concept this particular concept uh, uh, the way that we have looked at pivot table fields and then uh, have areas to down, you know drag and drop your columns is very similar to how you do it in tableau except this areas will be on top your field list will be on the left hand side and your report will be right at the center here right so that's that's the uh, changes here but the concept the underlying concept of how pivot tables is used uh, is varied right not only in just excel but other platforms also so the first step now i want to find uh, obviously uh, number of females and males in each of the location so first let's begin by getting the number of um, you know employees in that particular um, in this particular data right so if i take if i want to get the number of employees what i can do is i'll just drag employees to the values area right and i get the count of employees within that particular table right so i have around 400 employees now um, i have to break this by location and genders so what i'll do is i'll take location to the rows area then i can get the same information by uh, location now remember the trick here is that whenever you want something by a particular variable that's what that those are the things that goes into rows or column area right and it's interchangeable i can put it in the column areas and i will get the same information right and if i can put that into the rows area i also get the same information but the thumb rule here is that whatever variable has the longest number of unique values within that particular variable that should be the one that coming to the uh, rows area right so in this particular case gender has two unique values and location has around six unique locations hence we choose to put location into the rows area right now once we have done this uh, we can also take the count of genders by taking gender to the rows area and i will get this information which is uh, in in that particular location we have 20 out of which five of them are female and 15 of them are male i can then also take gender to the columns area and then it basically give you location wise or gender wise the same information but it's present in a much more compact form right so so far what we have learned is that uh, we can insert a pivot table you know drag the columns to the rows areas and values areas and then have a basic pivot table setup right now if you are doing along with me i just want you to know have you reached to this particular place right just want to say a yes no and so far any doubts to till to where we have okay no problem yeah uh, aswatali what you can do is just select this data and say insert a pivot table right so what we are doing is we basically taking this data and getting it ready to massage that data in such a form that that we can make sense out of it right that's what swetali so, now now insert tab obviously has a lot of other things that you can do basically you have illustrations and your all your charts and all the other things that are there but yes um one of the most important things that are there in the insert tab is the pivot tables okay now moving forward now this step uh, is really important guys this is where the manual selection manual grouping comes into the picture up till now yes we've done this it's very easy right um uh, one more thing before we move on um, and you'll also notice that we are getting count of employees here which means which i what me what this means is that i can take location and get count of location and i'm going to just get the same number of uh, same data right if i take gender i'm also going to get the same data what this means is that any of the columns can be you know taken as a proxy of count of number of rows within that particular data right only if it holds a numerical variable only then if you go to the value field settings 
you can do some average max min right now employee holds names hence we cannot do any of these things the only thing that we can do is get the count of rows right and this will be the count of unique rows within that particular data obviously that is okay so so the next thing obviously we want to basically divide this by region in um, uh, these locations by region and what we have seen is that you know I, again i place this randomly california washington and massachusetts are at the north region so i want to group that information together so that i can see what are the number of employees in north region and south region right so to do that what i'm going to do is select california hold control key and then select massachusetts and then select washington also so i selected three of them i lifted the control uh, key and i'm not pressing it anymore i can then say right click group right so what this does it it basically groups them under one umbrella and puts them such as this i can then select the rest of the three by again holding the control key and sometimes it's a little tricky as you can notice but ensure you have three of them selected and right click and group so you have two different groups available which can then basically renamed to be north and south right i'll take a stop here and check if you are able to do this i will repeat these steps please let me know if you are able to do this particular steps right so what i did is i selected california massachusetts and washington right click group one group is created what i can do is i can shift this up select the rest of the three say group and then i have two different groups available here i can rename this to north and then i can rename this to south two different um uh, names here and two different groups right now once you've done this you will notice that above location location 2 is placed which means location 2 is derived out of location which is why it's named as location 2 if you do field settings right you can change this custom name to region and say okay right which means basically what we have done is we've inserted a new column within the pivot tables which does not exist in the original data right it's only present in this pivot table as long as this pivot table holds this new column will hold else it will not be held right um just give me a confirmation if you are able to do this particular step and see the two subdivisions you can do rename of that by simply selecting the field settings on the small arrow here and then rename that to region start two settings you know you'll have field settings and then you will also have value field settings right there are two settings and then also we'll have pivot table settings right so value field settings field settings and pivot table settings okay moving on so moving on now we've done this particular scenario so let's explore the design tab now design tab is very uh, it's a very intuitive um tab to use and i'm going to show you some of the features um that we generally end up using so subtitles now many of you might have not gotten the subtotal values in the newer version it comes up by default but in the older versions what you have to do to show the subtotals is that you know you'll generally be at this state so what you can do is select it and say show, show subtotals at the bottom or top of the group right by default it's on the top of the group but you can choose to show it at the bottom of the group then you can choose to show grand totals sorry or you can choose to show uh, both of them what the grand totals there also 
apart from that you also have report layout which is one of the most important features here and we end up often using this particular scenario to further analyze this data right so there's an option called show in tabular form which changes this from one column to another column right or else what happens it's both present within the same column right because we are using pivot tables so what you can do is you know show the tabular form and then we can say repeat all items to basically say this information here right now when you repeat um repeat all this items here you will see that this particular information right is uh, i mean not left with blank now if it is not there what will happen is you will see there is some blank available here right now so how do we how do we uh, actually use this particular information we remove the subtotals we remove the grand totals right and we repeat all the items so that this particular table um this particular pivot becomes into a tabular form which can be then reused to further analyze right now why is this very important often some of these pivot tables that we are using the data will not reside on excel right it is usually on an sql server and you are only look at looking at the pivot right so you cannot really get all the rows because you know transactional data is really heavy so what you can do is what we do is we basically create small summaries like this and then redistribute this summaries to all the folks that they want to use it because using millions of rows in excel and passing it around is just absurd right which is why we use basically uh, uh, you know sql servers to host the data but we see us pivot table to just summarize that particular information right so that's one of the usages remember guys report layout really really important when you are using excel you may be not using it um immediately but uh, it's going to go a long way if you remember this particular trick okay moving on right so moving on what i'm going to do is i reinstate the um subtotals reinstate the grand total right and we have this particular information the next thing is obviously uh, you know you might be wondering what this blank row is so if i do uh, insert blank row what it does is basically inserts one blank row from the subtotals and the grand totals which basically gives a breather for this particular pivot table anyway so the last thing that is there obviously pivot table styles now and uh, you know housekeeping things so that this particular report is presentable so that's that's a, a final step guys where basically what it means is that i can basically uh, hide or show the field list and then i can also hide the buttons that are available here right and i can also ha hide the field headers right but usually we like to keep the field headers and the buttons uh, that just uh, better and just hide the field list right so what we have done basically is that uh, we have created a pivot table um have our information in such a way that it's presentable and it helps us show the information right now what we can also do with this particular information is that if i can right click on this and say value field settings i can show this value as a percentage of a particular um, uh, reference point right so for example i can show percentage of grand total percentage of column total percentage of row total and so on right so for example this let's say percentage of grand total you're not going to go into all of the options but i'm going to show you what it looks like or what what it um things like right so for example in this particular example we say percentage of grand total which would mean that in north right out of four of 400 people that are present 60% of them are in the north and 40% of them are in the south similarly we can interpret that um in california there are 27% of the employees present out of the entire table right uh, also 11% of them are in elephant 11% of the females are in california in the north region right so that's the interpretation that you make here and obviously there are other ways uh that you can show this but yeah this is one of the ways to basically flip the data and uh just look at the um entire information 
in a different perspective right and uh, it's it's really helpful uh, looking at this percentages when we are doing analysis on basically trends such as um, basically your uh, what we say year on year comparison quarter on comparison quarter on quarter comparison month on month comparison and so on and so forth right so that's how this particular uh, example works right uh, so just want to take stop here and take any doubts if there are any and uh, if you are able to do this small um, kind of changes right uh, on the design tab so let's move on to the next example guys then so in the next example i have with me sales by date you can open this information and please let me know what kind of information do you see in this sales by date so just let me know what kind of information uh, can we extract from this particular uh, table so all of them are right right but yes uh, the weekly one is going to be slightly tricky to use right and let's see how we can do that right so obviously um let we begin and obviously let's see what what kind of dates uh, are available within this also right so uh, we have uh, 2008 and 2009 data from january to december right and that's how this information is placed that's how you can look at it now what we can do is um once we see this data let's insert a pivot table on it right so once you insert the pivot table we want to get the monthly sales that's right now to get the monthly sales what we can do is we can just drag sales to the values area and date to the rows area and once i do that notice that automatically excel creates two more um columns there right two more fields one is years quarters qu uh, quarters and then we also have date which is a representative of month here how do i know that if i expand these selection you will see that i have 2008 quarter 1 and jan is jan feb march is representative of the date field here okay so that's how this particular pivot table works but primarily if you if you right click and ungroup here idly some of them will be able to see this will see this data like this right so if you are in this particular example um right uh, the the example that we are referring to is called automatic grouping example and which is by date right so uh, if you have encountered this particular scenario what you can do is you can simply say group select quarter and year and say okay and it will group this information in such a way that you can get this particular information now for a, for the next example what i'm going to do is i'm going to take quarters out and say years and data available here right so let me know if you have reached to this particular stage and then um we can move on to the next example so once you've done this let's move on to the uh, next example hey so i can insert a pivot table on, i mean pivot chart on top of this right and it's very different from the charting uh, charts that we have on um in the in in the insert tab here this chart it's it's within contained within this particular data and this particular pivot chart will be related to the pivot tables okay so when i say pivot chart right and i select a line chart here a line with markers and say okay you will be able to see a particular chart like this right which basically shows the information from 2008 to 2009 right hey but how about a chart which helps me compare 2008 and 2009 data can you tell me how can we uh, achieve this right i want to compare 2008 and 2009 data how can we achieve this this is basically a trend which is showing from jan 2008 to december 2009 but i want to compare both 2008 and 2009 so what do i have to change in the pivot table such that this particular uh, information can be extracted any guesses guys years exactly so we move years to the column areas and that's where the comparison begins right so we have just a change of perspective 
giving a whole new set of information for the user to interpret right which means now you can see that jan feb march till may or till june follows a similar trend right it's like this m sort of a shape and then it took off um and then it has remained flat uh from july onwards right and uh, so that's how this particular thing is really really helpful right so all you need to do is just think of the perspective that you're giving an user and what he needs to read from this particular tables or this particular chart and that's how you move the pivot table around okay so i have one more example on this particular scenario what we can also do is take years to the filters area now uh, i have 2008 9 and it shows 2010 by default which is an excel doing we don't have any data with 2010 in it or less than 1st uh, january 2008 or greater than 1st january 2010 it's just that by default it's present there which is just a excel thing so what we can do is basically we can just limit our data to 2008 and 2009 now what is happening here guys can you tell me oh you're saying in the charts right so basically uh, uh this is line with markers and when you're stacking a line right what it means is that it basically adding on top of the each other right so i'm going to show you one example there some of the charts that we're going to cover there but yeah i'll show you there okay we'll come to this point okay anyway so um so what's happening guys here uh, we have jan to december uh, data and we have selected years 2008 and 2009 so what do you interpret out of this data sum of both years exactly that's what is happening here right but hey can i show this information in two different sheets right often you will be in situation where you want to show each of these categories in multiple sheets and there's a real really easy way to do that what you can go uh, to this particular analyze tab go to the options tab and say show report filter pages if you have multiple uh, you know fields within the uh, filters area you will see all of them listed here you can just select any one of them say okay and by uh, in just a click you what will what excel will do is it will show you 2008 and 2009 in two different sheets and display that information right now it may seem very useless at this point of time but just imagine if you have 10 to 20 categories here and you want to show each of those categories in multiple sheets right one one such example is i work i work for the apj region and i i work with five different countries um in supplying them information right now i don't give one country's information to other country's information so what i have to do is basically i have to make a report <coughs> yes i'll i'll do that step so uh basically what i have to do is uh you know i have to make that report filter into multiple um sheets and then uh, give each of those sheets to uh, different different countries right so this helps me do that really quickly right or else what i have to do i have to copy paste select 2008 copy paste that entire table in one sheet select 2009 copy paste that information and keep going there right so that's uh, that's really uh, helpful in a uh, pivot table so what i can do in this particular thing you go to the analyze tab go to the options tab say show report fold filters select what you want to show for and say okay and then really quickly you'll get 2008 and 2009 in two different sheets even some of the intermediate users on pivot tables will not know this but a lot of professionals find this very time saving right especially hrs okay guys so uh, this is one of the examples that i really want to share on on this uh, years part of it and okay so moving on now i've shown years as a selection of a filter criteria but if i remove years right and then i go to the tab analyze tab and we're going to i mean we are obviously exploring some of these options 
But if I'm going to say insert slicers and then insert years, quarters, and date, say okay, what will happen is Excel will automatically provide you choices uh, just as you know we have on websites and different application forms or mobiles or something like that. We have selection criteria available. So what we can do is basically we can select quarter one and I can see only quarter one information. But this thing becomes magical when you basically put a pivot chart on top of it, let's say a clustered column, right? And I'm going to take these four together, right? And sorry. And then place them on another sheet, right? Now, when I do that, I'm just going to place these items in this way. And something like this. Okay, this is a very rough dashboard, but you'll get, a, you'll get an idea of uh, doing this, right? So, anyway, so what happens here now is that you have a small dashboard prepared, but the data is in the background here, but your uh, controls are here, right? So I can see a con quarter two, um, quarter two information there. Let's increase the columns here. Quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. That's how I can change this particular uh, step here, right? If I want, I can remove all of them. I can also compare those. Uh, I mean, those those regions that I want to see. Like I can compare every alternate month if I have to, right? So that's really a helpful way to look at the same information um, in a new way, right? And this controls helps you do that, right? I can see only 2008 and 2009 data also, right? So there's a lot of flexibility to how you can see the same information, right? Now it's up to you how you can utilize these filters and uh, leverage the charts to see this information, right? So that's uh, pivot tables with slicers available for you, right? Now, what you can also do is that if you go to the pivot table that we have created here and you can insert a timeline um, uh, filter here, which is a lot different in which works only when dates are available, right? So if you have this information, you can choose to filter by years uh, and select 2008 information, 2009 information, um, or if you want to select months, you can select two different months of a year and do it, right? So um, that way, uh, it, it, it also has all the same fix functionalities, but just within one filter, right? So all of them can differ. Cool. So yeah, so that's slicers for you. Uh, anything with pivot tables with slicers just makes this whole thing awesome, right? So any doubts, guys, so far till this particular example? Okay. So let's move on to the new uh, new example then. And this time, the onus is on you to complete this particular step. Okay. So let's open the next one called test scores. Say enable edit editing. Okay. Now here's a challenge, guys. Now you've learned pivot tables. You know how to drag and drop your fields, whatever it is, right? Um, now in this particular example, I want you all to find out uh, what is the count of employ? I mean, count of students that have scored between a score range, right? So 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 21 to 90, 91 to 100, right? So that's the count of employees I want to get here. How do you do that, right? So open up your pivot table, insert a pivot table, and get me this particular information. You know, type in the chat what field goes into what area and what did you do to get this particular information? Okay, score in rows and student in count. That's right. Yep, that's right. So here's the, uh, here's the thing guys. What you need to know is that you're looking at uh, 
you know that buy statement that i gave you right so if you want to see something by a particular variable right i want to get the count of students by uh, the score range right so the by part right will definitely go into the rows area right so that's the rule so if i do insert a pivot table right i take the students i want the count of students right so i get the count of students here but i want it in a particular range right now when i put it in the rows area it's obviously not in the way that we want to see it but i'll group that information say minimum to be 1 right and maximum to be 100 and then i take it divide it by the steps of 10 so you'll get 10 equal buckets and uh, how many of the students have scored within that particular thing but if you notice here you will see that i have only eight of these categories coming in and 1 to 10 and 11 to 20 does not come in can you guess why that particular thing is happening 1 to 10 and 11 to 20 is not occurring within this place so what do you think is going on here yes there is no data correct and this is one of the things that i faced and i can never forget this example so when i was starting off with pivot table 8 8 9 years back right and i was just doing this i i came into the same situation where i am basically did the categories and i'm getting the count but some of the categories are missing and my boss is like hey where are the other categories and like i went back and i found out oh there's no data so that's why it's not there but then that no data also wants to be Uh, visible on a chart so that we can say that there is no data right so what we have, what do we do to get that particular information back right now always i forget which option it is let's say field settings yep yeah i did it right so when you say field settings right click and says field setting there's an option called layout and print apart from the subtotal layout and print if you go to you will see show items with no data and say okay so when you do that you get a lot of other things and we can remove this less than 1 and greater than 101 it's not possible to scroll there but i get the 10 categories now hey but again there is no nothing saying that it's a zero right so what i can do is i can say field settings and then insert for empty values insert a zero right you can also do for error values show something right zero right so if i say zeros then i get a particular um then i get this information visible and then i can also click on pivot chart to show a clustered column and say okay and and then you have this particular information available right and as you can notice what we have created is a histogram uh, which is a frequency table and it's highly skewed towards the 81 to 90 right um if you want to break this more down what you can do is you can simply say group and say divided by 5 and say okay and then you will see a much more further divisions within the same data right click on this guys uh, say field settings right layout and print and say show items with no data that's the one part of it and right click and say pivot table options uh, in the format say for empty cells put zero there that are the two options okay so let's move on to the next example now this is one again obviously this was an automatic grouping examples but this time numbers but let's move on to the next example in the next example calculated fields and item can you all open that file and here's the table guys so we have this information and what is the kind of report can be generated out of this data any thoughts guys total sales by sales person that's right that's right obviously we want to analyze we see sales representative obviously we want to see the performance of the sales representative right and we want to see their monthly performance right and uh and one of the things that we have to create within this particular data set is what is their average unit price right so basically um if you're analyzing amy 
we want to see how much average uh, price per unit she's selling on right we don't want to uh, have sales go up if the average unit price is really low right you're going to impact your margins right so that's one of the metrics that we want to see right and we want to see it by month right so let's do the first thing uh, uh, quickly okay uh, i want to get the uh, first the sales information directly and then obviously next part is uh, get the uh, average unit price so what i can do is i'm going to insert a pivot table say okay right and i'm going to take sales rep to the columns area month to the rows area and sales to the values area right can you all do this for me guys quickly and also while you are on it go to value field settings for some of sales select number format you'll notice that this format has gone so you're going to choose currency no decimals choose dollar united states and say okay and say okay and you'll see that the format is available like this okay guys so uh, if you've done this done this part now things are going to get little interesting here still things are going to get little interesting here and how is that now how do you calculate the average unit price guys so in this particular data i want to calculate the average unit price how do you think i can calculate it sales by unit right so i'm going to create a new column called average unit price and then i can say equal to sales divided by unit sold and that's how i get the average unit price right and if i remove the decimals you will be able to clearly see uh, a representation such as this right but a question here now now if i want to know the average unit price on a yearly level for a particular sales representative right there are two ways to do it i will say average of the 12 months that a sales representative did that's the average and i also can do sum of the sales for the 12 months divide by sum of sorry sum of the units sold right and if you note here you're going to see if you notice here you're going to see that both the averages give you different numbers so what do you think is the correct number here exactly 117 is the right answer why is that the reason is average of average is not possible right and this is one of the reasons why we end up doing such kind of averages within the pivot table it's rather than this right so when i take this into pivot table what will happen is this particular when i take an average of this average unit price it's going to give me 199 which is going to be a wrong indication which is why we're not going to create average unit price within this particular data set but we are going to create the average unit price within the pivot table itself and how do we do that that is an example for calculated fields right so if you go select this data and say calculated fields within the analyze tab it's going to open up this particular window right and what i can do is i can give a name to this i can give aup and aup is remove this sorry sales divided by unit sold say add and say okay right i hope you are with me on this one if you want me to repeat this example i can repeat this but as you can note now i am able to see the entire information in one shot right i can rename this to be um you know just sales leaving a space 
else it will give me an error and I can do this as average unit price and view this information. Okay, I'll repeat the step again, guys. Sorry, we cannot undo this. So I am going to delete this. Okay, so here's the pivot table, guys. You go calculator fields, it's called AUP, and it's going to be sales divided by unit sold say add right say okay and it's automatically going to add this particular thing um, this particular example within this place right i can then say sales which will name the name and i use a space because if you do without the space right it's going to give you this error Right, so generally the trick is, if you want to rename something, just put a space, uh, space and do it. And here, what we're going to do is average unit price, name it properly, right? I don't want the grand totals for now, I'm just going to remove it, just to make some space. But if you remove the grand totals, this is what your final pivot table will look like. And when, when we when we want to see the sales and the average unit price uh, that they did it, right? Some of the things that you notice here that, uh, you know, in September, really bad performance by these um, sales representative. And not all of them are doing bad performance uh, in the same month, but in different months. The highest average unit price is around Jan, Feb and March um, for this guy and rest of them are also quite spread, right? So this is how you can analyze this information. Uh, any doubts so far, guys? Calculated fields is one thing you're gonna use very, very often. Okay, moving on to the next part of it, guys. So once we got that, the next part I want to get is go want to get the quarterly commission summary for each of the sales representative. I'll show you what that means. So in quarter four, 13% of the sales that a person does, a sales rep does, is going to be his commission, right? So if I want to extract the quarterly commission for Doug, that is the quarter four one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply copy the last row here, paste it here, Doug South, and it's going to be Q4 here. Now Q4 would mean that is the quarter four information, right? Here, what we can do is sum this information and that will basically give you the quarterly sale. And if I sum, these here, I'm going to get the quart quarterly units that they did, right? Now, this is obviously a quarterly summary, but I want to get the quarterly commission. So what I'll do is I'll multiply this by 13%, which will give me the quarterly commission for Doug, right? So what it's basically doing is it's taking sales and multiplying it in the multiplier that we have and getting you the commission, right? So as a, as a manager, I want to see what are the sales that this guy did and what is the commission that the company has to pay out to this particular thing, right? So it's two different reports within the same table and we are going to do that particular thing on, uh, uh, on pivot table itself, right? So to do that, what we need to do is go to the analyze tab, so insert and say calculated items, however, calculated items is not visible here. The reason it's not visible here is that you need to select the column that you need to apply calculated items on. And what we did there was one example of how calculated item works, right? So which means if you're doing adding or division with column on column, that is going to be a calculated fields. But if you are doing row on row calculations, that's going to be called as a calculated item. Right? It's a very rarely used phenomena, but I have used it multiple times uh, in my scenario. It's only when you know it you, that well, uh, only then you can apply it, right? So 
um, how do you apply it you just go select the column so calculated items right and what we're going to do is name this particular thing right so i'm going to say q1 commission right is going to be gotten by uh, sum of jan plus feb plus march divided by right uh, sorry multiplied by the multiplier so 10% is what we are going to get for uh, the first quarter right so that's that's the formula you can just put that i hope you're following along with me i'd say this formula say add now nothing will be visible because it's going to be a row and rows are usually visible here right so if i say okay it will going to be visible but while i'm here i can change this name to 2 and change the formula to write a new formula right i'm going to write a quarter 2 formula and the quarter 2 formula is going to be april plus may plus june right i'm going to change the percentage to 1 and say add similarly i can do another one that is q3 change the months here april may june july plus august plus september and change this to 12 percent say add I can then change this to four, change the rest of the months, change it to 13, and rest of the months could be October plus November plus December. Say add and say OK. So once you do that, what you'll note is that I have added some few rows within the pivot table, right? As opposed to adding columns like this, right? But the only problem with this particular thing is that um, there are two errors in this particular thing. Can you note or can you point out what are the two errors that you notice within this pivot table? What else is wrong? So rightly said, what's happening with these rows now is that when you add these rows, uh, all of these things, actually the total sales is just some of these, right? These are just additional rows that we have inserted and we don't want them to be in the grand total, which means the grand total is wrong. So what I can do is I can right click here and remove the grand total here. Now, but this total sales or total commission payout is not visible, right? How do you show that back again? I want to see the total sales and total commission gone out. So how can I see that? Any ideas, guys? Oh, exactly right. Insert a row is not possible, Sandesh, right? If you do insert, it's going to give you this, right? So the best answer is the first example that we did, right? So I'm going to right click here and then say group. Similarly, I'm going to select all four of them and say group, right? Group one, group two. I'm going to call this as sales and I'm going to call this as commission, right? And I'm also going to Go to design tab, show subtotals at the bottom of the group and insert a blank line, right? Which basically creates a report, sales report and a commission report with their individual subtotals and nothing can go out of place, right? There is one more problem with this and, um, you know, the average unit price does not really make sense for this, right? We just want to show a commission view and we don't want to see uh, average unit price here, right? So how do we get rid of it? 
what we can do is select all of these and apply some Indian Jugaad on this, right? Indians are known for Jugaad. So I'm going to change the font style to white and it's not going to be visible, right? So this is one report where we have used a calculated field and calculated items to show this information, right? So very easy guys, just group, um, you know, show subtotals at the bottom of the group and then hide the things that you don't want to show in the pivot table. Right guys? Any doubts guys so far till this point? Okay, really important concept, guys. Um, just remember it. Uh, no other way, <laughs> Thandava. We have to apply some Jugaad only. Okay. Anyway, so that's that's uh, and the the concept, guys. Now I'm going to show you some housekeeping concepts which are really important, right? Um, and uh, see how we can uh, leverage it, right? So if you go to the Analyst, Analyze tab, right? Uh, you're going to see some things uh, like change data source, right? Now, when you say change data source, you will see that table one is available there, right? Now, what this means is that this is, a, this is something called as a name manager concept, which we have covered in, in the previous, um, uh, examples, right? I converted it into a table and this, we can give this a name, right? So if the data is refreshed in that table, you're automatically going to, um, you know, refresh this pivot table and show that information here, right? So that's one thing that is uh, uh, available there. Plus, um, what is the other thing? Oh, okay, yeah, so refresh and refresh all would mean that you want to refresh all the pivot tables within this entire workbook. Refresh is just the particular uh, refresh table, right? You can also change the data sources of a pivot table uh, and then um, do whatever you want to do. Clear would basically clear all the changes that we have made here. Um, and this generally we don't uh, really use so much. Piv move pivot table is basically you want to move this to another location so, location, so then you can use that particular thing, right? Apart from that, if you want to see a slicer, right, you can show a reason sli slicer like we have done and you want to analyze north and south information, I can simply say north and south information, right? So what this clearly tells is that uh, Amy and Bob are working in the north and Chuck and Dog are working in the south, right? Yeah, you'll have to do that, Sandesh. Yeah, that's right, right? And you'll see this particular error coming up. So what you can do is pivot table options for error values, so zero, and say, okay, which will make it much more cleaner, right? So uh, that's how you look at this information and uh, pivot table, guys. Obviously formatting, you know, but this is the entire concepts of, uh, of pivot table here, right? Now, obviously there are some things that you will learn when you're working along with it, right? But yeah, these are very important concepts that you need to uh, cover, right? Also, if you notice just one more thing, uh, you basically have a filter connections, which basically means that if you have a filter like this, it can be connected to multiple uh, sheets or multiple pivot tables. For example, what I can do is I can cover copy this pivot table, right? And let's say I just want to see something very different. No, sorry. And I want to copy this. It should be copied entirely. Right, so if the pivot table is copied, right? I can simply, um, you know, remove this categories, remove this, and then I can do it by say, I 
can uh, let's put one back and I can instead of showing sales I can show units sold right I have these two different uh, pivot tables and both of them if the report connections mentioned here uh, are uh, selected right uh, it's connected to the same pivot table what will happen is you'll see north and south and both of these pivot tables will change according to it right and uh, uh, that's one of the things that you need to know that you know yeah um, if if you have multiple uh, uh, pivot tables sorry if you have multiple pivot tables you can collect the same slicer to multiple pivot tables and then control them right sometimes i don't want to control this with this so what i can do is i can simply uncheck that and say okay so only this pivot table will change the bottom one will not change at all right so that's how you control this uh, report connections right but yeah when you're working on a dashboard or something like that it's better you uh, connect it but if you're working on multiple reports within the same data then obviously you'll have to choose which kind of filters will be applied for which kind of pivot table so that's the control uh, you get to do okay guys so any doubts so far on this uh, information Okay, so let's come sing, let's cover something different then. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to show you a name manager concept, which I didn't show in the previous session, right? And what are the kind of functions you covered in the previous session, guys? What are the functions you guys covered, guys? Okay. What else? Have you covered some ifs? Okay, cool. So everybody has covered some ifs. Nice. So here's the challenge for you guys. So I've I have the sales representatives here. Yeah, rather I'm going to place this here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is also get this months available that I have here. Paste it here. And remove duplicates. I hope you remember remove duplicates. Right. And I'm going to place months in this particular place right so i have this particular i have this table with me here right and now you're going to do pivot table using some ifs right and really important you know um uh, this particular uh, concept so using some ifs can you get me the sales for each of this Sales representative by month. So how will the sum if formula look like? You can make this on your own Excel sheet, have the data and try to use some ifs to extract this information. Right? For simplicity's sake, just delete all the preceding columns and preceding rows. Right, so this is your your table. 
and how do you use some ifs to get this information right any ideas guys any thoughts any ideas guys okay so let me just show you guys so how do you use some ifs right uh, you have used some uh, if there's a small extension to some if some ifs called as some ifs which is basically more than one criteria right so if the sum in some ifs you know the sum range right i want to get the sum of sales so i'm going to select sum of sales here right right and it's going to be like this sum of sales comma the criteria range is obviously sales representative so i'm going to do sales representative comma i'm going to go here select this f4 once twice to fix the rows comma go back to this uh, data and select month this time say comma come back to this information select this say f4 once twice and tries to fix the column close the bracket and then i get this information right if i drag this sorry uh, i need to fix this information fix 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 enter so if i drag this right and then copy the cells below what i'm getting is the same pivot table information that i generated using pivot table here right if i remove this and remove average unit price you'll see i'm getting the same information that i generated here right it's exactly the same information but with pivot tables here right so this is the sum if formula power of sum if formula and it's doing exactly what we did in the pivot table but i've layered a lot of concepts within this particular example uh, i just want to take a pause here and ask any doubts because i know this is a really tricky concept I'm not saying this is a complicated or a complex concept a difficult concept it's a little tricky that's all there is any doubt so far till what i have used okay can i take this a level notch up now we have extracted the sales here Are you ready for the challenge guys? Is equal to a me. Yeah. You can do this Pratik, but now that jan is equal to jan will have to be changed, right? It's going to be fixed. So what you have done here is this oops sorry i'm not able to press but what you have done here is you have to you have put equal to a me here right and uh, then that right 
but you don't use the equal sign there pratik don't use the equal sign there and you're using some if yeah so it's going to be a little difficult to write the formula there in this particular scenario pratik okay some ifs is a much more better cleaner way to use it anyway so so moving on um now how do you find the average unit price here so i want you all to find the average unit price here how can you do it do it guys sell values in the sense sandesh okay average if will not give you it is only going to give you the singular columns this thing yes it can be it can be and i'm going to which is where i'm going to come to now so that's one way of doing it but there's another way of doing it and we are going to use that in a while but for now can you all put your focus on how do we get the average unit price here now remember we are using two different columns here to get this get this output so how will you do it any ideas guys and in case you are looking for the formula that i am use i have used this is what i have used seems complicated formula right can you understand what's happening within it also okay so here's the thing guys now there's a concept called as name manager which i didn't do earlier and a, a really important feature that i want you all to know right and trust me this makes a thing things a lot better accurate and faster right so i'm going to select all the columns here say name manager uh, sorry create from selection and just select only top row here right say only top row and say okay now what this does is that if you click on name manager what it does it, it basically created certain columns here right now what this means is that you have different names available so if i select month only month column will be selected if i do sales only sales is selected unit sold only unit sold is selected right so now if i rewrite this same formula right will suddenly become a lot cleaner right so here some ifs right i want the sum of sales right now instead of checking all that selecting the table i'm just going to want to, i want the sum of sales then i want the criteria to be the sales rep so i'm going to say sales rep should be this above one f4 f4 and fix the row comma um month should be this one here f4 f4 and f4 close the bracket and you get the same information here right the only difference is that you know it's a lot more better right which one is better the first one or the second one that we wrote right so this is one of the concepts guys whenever you are basically working with uh, such type of data if you start using name manager or the format as table you are going to use this in a much more cleaner format and the prop the, the the advantage of this particular thing is when i drag left or right you see these names remain intact right except for this positional fix here we don't have to do anything else 
which is a lot cleaner formula right uh, guys any doubts on this particular example and why we use name manager okay so now you know that con now you know this concept can you help me build a formula to get me average unit price now how do i get average unit price okay the problem statement is very simple guys i got the sum of sales but i want the sum of divide by the sum of unit sold so if i do unit sold just one change within that formula leaving the rest of the formula as is i get the average unit price now if i drag this formula down and down here i am going to get this information make sense guys and uh, remember guys very very important concept what you can do on pivot table you can also do it using sum ifs right sum ifs average ifs sum if average if max if min if and all of that right so it's very easy to get this information now the only only advantage with this particular thing is that now i can move these cells one below the other and still have a view that is intact right now these formulas are working very well together right i can insert a i can insert a column here and divide this information however i want to show it right so uh, the advantage to using this functions is a lot because you have a flexibility of placing it wherever you want to place it right so that's how you use name manager to basically create a name from selection and then uh, get this information right so yeah so that that's the concept guys uh, here and um, any doubt so far guys as we move on to the next topic any doubts guys okay no doubts so here's the things guys the next concept is called charting and yes they will their name managers will exist yes okay guys so here's an important concept that we're going to cover now uh charting usually you find a lot of people saying we can insert this that and then get a chart and all that thing right but here's a concept that i would want to show you it's called the abelas chart um it's called the uh, abelas chart hierarchy and i usually i want to build, begin the charting with this particular concept right so you have broad categories um as comparison distribution composition and relationship right so these are the broad categories distribution is what we have seen in that age example where you are basically doing histograms right and showing each of the point uh, as a, an outcome right similarly over time is basically your um i mean uh, so that's a distribution and you have multiple variants within it we then also have over time which basically a line chart Uh, is shown where it's basically your um things like date time and all that thing right and then categories is basically your column charts or you know horizontal vertical bar charts and then uh, any other charts that are there right relationships again scatter plot and then bubble charts right um change over time is something that you're going to see the stack chart right somebody uh, sandesh was asking why we use stack chart i'm going to show you a while why that's that's there and then 
a part of a whole is what we saw composition and that's where pipe and again 100% pipe, um, stack charts are also visible there right so that's that's really the charting hierarchy and um, you know obviously it's it's a practicing um, it's going to be a continuous practice of what kind of chart you're going to use for what kind of scenario always begin there rather than just going to the chart and insert a chart and do that information right you have to select get an idea of what you need to represent to that particular user right only then will you be able to select a particular chart right so now let's look at uh, some of the charting examples here and some of the ones that that are really, uh, really uh, you know doubtful in the in the mind right now um, for charts such as um, histogram you know the dis distribution you are able to see it very easily right sorry for distribution you are able to see it very easily um, things like uh, you know column chart and all that also are uh, very fairly easy but what i'm going to show you is a stacked chart right and how how does a stacked chart add up is is something like this right so let's say um i have this information with me and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this information and insert a stack chart on it right so what this stack chart does it basically just let me format something right so what this stack chart does is guys it basically um you know adds uh, you know places this uh, this information one below the other right and um and you're able to see this information like this right so for example i've got amy's and bobs um you know average unit price on top of each other here but right this doesn't really make sense so i'm just going to switch the rows and columns and uh, show this similar information right so um, i mean in fact this is a lot better if i show it with sales let me just insert a chart here also should not make sense now yes, let's insert a stack chart right now what i'm analyzing is um let me switch it add labels add labels add labels so what's happening here guys is that you know i'm able to see the quarter one sales uh, uh that happened broken down by jan feb and march right now is is something um you know that that adds up to a particular total right so if you see 23 24 20 uh, this thing adds up to a sum of sales right now it is a sum of whole which is then divided into certain categories so uh, you know we are accustomed to see one particular bar chart here but in this particular scenario what we are doing is trying to stack that information and compare it with each other right so for example what do you make from this particular thing in the same quarter right amy made much more sales than bob right and if you see the blue on blue comparison jan he did more right uh, orange it seems a little uh, less right and in um, in the gray obviously they did a similar amount right so what this tells us that the bob did not perform really good in in the first quarter right but similarly when you keep adding more information to this particular thing it will start making sense right so that's how you read that uh, stack chart hope um, you know sandeep that particular this particular chart now makes sense to you right that's where we use a stack stack chart right so now this is a stack uh, stack chart obviously now if you go to the insert uh, all of you fairly understand all of this um here uh, but i want to quickly change this uh, uh you know chart type to a 100% stack column 
Now, what this 100% uh, stack, stack column does is that it basically uh, takes this entire sales and keep makes it 100%, which means there's no differentiation between these two. That way, what will happen is the the differences, the percentages within this particular mixes is going to pop out, right? And you see the difference of these blues will be much more visible versus what we were able to see uh, when uh, when it was there in the previous case, right? And um, so that's the reason we use a 100% um, stack chart. It's basically to get what happened uh, between those two scenarios, right? So it's a much more uh, better way to look at it. And obviously charting is, uh, it's not. It's not only that, right? So that's that's one of the way to do it. Similarly, uh, you can you can then also look at a bar chart, right? A bar chart is basically uh, going to show that information in such a way. Yeah, that is basically sum of whole. So if you see the Jan sales, right? And I want to show up. I mean, sorry, a pie chart. It basically shows a sum of whole, right? And uh, it, it means that in Jan, we did so much sales, but uh, that's how we divide this chart, right? And what this information says is that, uh, sorry, if I didn't select, if I do a pie chart like this, Right, so what this tells us that, you know, Doug did the maximum sales within that Jan month, right? And obviously that's that's how this uh, interpretation is done and 29% is what he did, right? So he's the heaviest in that particular Jan, right? And the lowest is obviously 22%, right? 22%, which is basically Chuck. So that's how you uh, interpret uh, your this chart. Now, there are apart from that, there are waterfall charts, again, which is, um, used for showing, uh, you know, additions and deletions from one month to another month, right? Um, usually in terms of change or whatever it is. So that's that's some of the charts that that we use. Um, apart from that, bubble chart is basically used. Uh, a scatter chart is basically used to show that show that information. So, for example, things like I can do a, a, a bubble chart on this. I mean, a scatter plot on this particular thing, and it basically shows what your sales is and uh, uh, units sold, right? So what's the relationship between uh, uh, the the charts charts there, right? And uh, we can also basically model certain um, uh, things on this and uh, uh, had a trend line and you, you can see that uh, if you, uh, you know, if you sell more units, you're going to sell, you're going to do more sales, right? So that's just uh, another way of looking at the chart, right? So uh, these are some of the important um, charting techniques. Some of the other things that are there, we can figure it out, but these are some of the important things that I want to show you and from a charting perspective, right? So I'll just stop here, showed you buckets of what this uh, charting techniques are there. Obviously, there's a lot to it. Trust me, even today also, I'm trying to figure out how to use charts to tell what kind of story and all that thing. But uh, primarily begin with the Abela's chart. What do you want to show to the user? That are the two questions that you need to start before you even insert a chart, right? And which will basically 90% of the time give you a better result representation for the user to look at. Anyways, guys, I'll take a pause here um, for today's session. And take in any questions so far, what you have done in Excel and any other doubts that you have in mind.